Hey everybody, it's Aluna Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer here, um, and I am going to talk to you about the events of June 2017. Okay, so let's start with um, a few things that are happening right at the beginning of the month. Um, on the 1st of June, what we've got is Mars opposite Saturn. Mars is in Gemini, Saturn's in Sagittarius. And this happens... Um, I mean, it's kind of been happening since the end of May, but it's just kind of worth talking about here um, that it creates kind of a can, can create a feeling of tension because Mars is like, go for it. And Saturn's like, check things out before you go for it. You know, so you can feel blocked or it can be up against your own fears. Um, a lot of times with, you know, Gemini is about the thinking and Saturn being in Sagittarius is about your bigger belief systems. So... That it's kind of like, can you walk your talk? Can you, do you believe in your own truth enough to try? Can you go past your fears? Can you break out of limited thinking? And almost the kind of a disgust with yourself, with the um, Mars and Gemini and the, um, the Saturn right there. It's like, oh, like, I hate what I can't get past this thing, you know? So there can be some breakthroughs around that time. Also because, sorry, my neck is doing something here. Okay. Um, also because uh, we've got, Venus in Aries right next to Uranus in Aries. And this is about the same degree we've got the Mars and Saturn. So the Mars and Saturn can be grr. And that Venus-Uranus can be a big breakthrough because Uranus is always about breaking through and freeing yourself and stuff. And Venus is about love, um, but it can be about higher principles of things. And like, um, do you love yourself enough to to have the courage to move out of the box or go past the limitation or go over the obstacle, you know, um, that you know that you're going to appreciate yourself because you try a little harder because you, um, you know, challenge yourself in that way. Um, so, and that it's a loving thing to do to yourself to not put yourself down or do that believe that this is all there is this mars opposed saturn is saying there's got to be something better than that you know and that venus uranus is like ah and here it is also venus and uranus are making actually a nice angle a 60 degree angle which is called a sextile to mars and a 120 degree angle that's called a trine to saturn so as much frustration as there is there it's like ah here's the way out and that can be also venus can be about forgiveness whether it's about for yourself or another person um or situation or forgiving yourself for the limiting pattern or how long you've been in that limiting pattern all of that so and and of course i mentioned last month we're coming on the heels of venus passing its uh, station retrograde point so it was coming in the middle like the third week of may coming out of its retrograde pattern so that's very freeing too because it was venus and aries so you know it's it's a brand new way to love yourself to love others to um have a spirit of adventuresomeness you know and um and i think that what mars and saturn are saying is like it's okay to be like yeah i'm gonna do it or that kind of uh, beginning adventure which is aries um, but how is it lived out moment to moment, thought by thought, you know, um, that's like the real victory there is not just to say you're going to do it or do it in the short term, but the Saturn doesn't have to be a bummer with Mars. It's like making sure you're not just going, yeah, me, you know, cause both Aries, the Venus and, um, uh, Uranus and Aries it can be very short term and Mars itself can be short term. So that Saturn is in a way a helper saying, how do we do this long term? How do we do this moment by moment? How do we, um, you know, look at it um, in a more consistent level? So um, in that way, Mars opposed Saturn doesn't have to be a bummer. It can be how do we extend the enthusiasm of Mars and the courage of Mars and to do it in the tiniest, humblest way is also powerful. You know, not just the big thing you do, um, but the moment to moment things can be the victory. So that can be a positive way to look at that Mars and Saturn. Um, and to maybe find something specific that you want to overcome in yourself and see where is the root of it. Because Saturn can also show the foundation of something. And what is the, um, the ways that shows itself that if it's, you know, I'm depressed or I get impatient in relationships or whatever. Like where's the root thought, the root belief, and where do you 
pull that out of the soil and day by day maybe the little weeds come up and you pull it, pull it, pull it. But then you end up being able to live that big adventure all the time because you're on top of the tiny pieces that feed into the big story, you know? So that can be a goal. Um, and sometimes when you you do create a goal with Saturn, it feels less frustrating, you know, because you know where the tension is coming from, that you feel the frustration from. So that can be very helpful. Now, oopsie. Uh, sorry about that. Um, now, about this idea of setting yourself free from things, a similar theme is, is going further here. On June 9, the planet Jupiter is going to go forward. Now, I've said this before, but I should say it more often, but all the planets, except the sun and moon, which we count as planets in astrology, all the planets stop and go backwards and stop and go forwards. So we know a lot about Mercury retrograde, you know, which happens three times a year for three weeks at a time. And then I just mentioned the Venus went retrograde. So the outer planets, and let's just call them um, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, all retrograde once and go direct once. So Jupiter went retrograde in the beginning of February, and now it's going forward at the May, June 9th. And Jupiter has a lot to do with, um, and why this might sound a little similar is because Saturn's in Sagittarius and Sagittarius and Jupiter, Jupiter rules Sagittarius. So it's about those ideas of living your dream, you know, and what is my dream? And, um, you know, what, where am I, what are my goals? And um, what are the beliefs that I have? Do they limit me or do they free me? So Libra, Jupiter's in Libra right now, and Libra's the scale, so it's up and it's down. And how do you keep from tipping so far, you know, uh, that Jupiter can be, yay, yay, and how are you in that, the fulcrum, that center of the scale, so you don't move very far, and not that you're boring, but that you don't feel so exhausted from the ups and downs. And the other thing that's really interesting about Jupiter is it definitely represents these new horizons and feeling excited and happy, joyful. And when Jupiter is slowing down, a lot of people think, oh, I'm having a Jupiter transit for so long, but half of it's a retrograde, you know, because normally Jupiter works with you for a short period of time. But um, when we're having the retrograde, it sits there for like two months and half the time it's going backwards. And that can be more of a feeling of like darkness before the dawn when Jupiter is slowing down, about to turn around. And it can feel not a lot of horizons and everything stinky and this kind of thing. But again, it's like what thought patterns, which Jupiter represents, um, what belief systems, what um, extrapolated things that she said, well, this happened to me, therefore that, that's kind of a Jupiter idea, um, and say what doesn't work for me anymore. What makes me unhappy if that, you know, like the person jumps off this, the seesaw and bang, you go down to the bottom of it. Ow. You know, like what thoughts do that to you where you suddenly go down to the bottom? And um, what perceptions or what relationships or how you perceive those relationships? A lot of Libra has to do with relationships. So looking at all of those things, and saying, you know, I don't want to go in that d direction or you know, people say, don't go there, or, you know, and not going there, not going down that road of negativity, not going into that, not letting the person, person's acting a certain way and just don't react to them. How do I not react or say, I feel like I'm going to react. I need to take a walk or something like that. Um, or just observing yourself, wanting to react or seeing um, another Libra thing is compassion for the person who's you know, and try to get you on the seesaw or merry-go-round, however you want to see that. And it's like, wow, they're in a lot of pain and they want to just engage me with this. Or, um, you know, even if it's a sad thing, not an angry thing, pulling you down. And, um, you know, how am I loving this person while not engaging in that drama, you know? Um, so also we can represent with relationships. Like if there isn't drama in the relationship, um, what is it for? And that's sort of a mean, a dark thought, but you know, Jupiter and Libra kind of says that, like, because sometimes we can just get caught up in the, like, the romance and then the yeah, or the fighting and the making up, or grumpy at the partner or something like that. And um, so Jupiter and Libra can say, what's the higher form of these relationships? And how do we feel alive in the relationship where there isn't chaos? 
um, can be another Jupiter going forward in Libra. So that's the ninth. And, um, and that's, again, kind of wrapping into all this other stuff and giving yourself positive um, goals to set, you know, about being loving to yourself and staying balanced and all of that. Okay, then we've got um, the plan. There's always somebody going retrograde, right? Um, Neptune is going to go retrograde on the 14th of the month. And it's, oh wait, yes, it's going, well, it's the 15th, I guess, but 14th, 15th, and it's going direct at 14 degrees of Pisces, um, if you care to know about that. So Neptune retrograde, Neptune in general is a planet about um, meditation, spiritual growth. Um, it can be about how you fool yourself about things, how you, Neptune's like about fog. So it's how you can put the wool over your own eyes or deceive yourself or things you hide from yourself, um, avoidant behaviors, um, addictions in the sense of escaping like addictions from a compulsive aspect are more Pluto, but um, the escapist element is is Neptune. And so when Neptune turns retrograde, it's looking at how you might avoid reality um, or how you might, um, you know, make it seem better, things seem better than it is um, instead of addressing a problem and then actually having it be truly better than it is. Um, but it also can be a great time for meditation for um, overcoming fears, for, and again, because it's in Pisces, it's also a very gentle sign, having compassion for yourself that you do have those fears. Um, but being able to uh, go within in a courageous way, because Neptune, when it goes deep, it's almost like how much courage you have to have to not just swim in the ocean, but those people that go down, 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 and they see the creatures with the funny glow-in-the-dark creatures and all that stuff and how much pressure it can be when you go down, down, down deep in the ocean. And and um, so this courage of going within and exploring within. Um, but it can be a great time for dreams, if you do dream journals or art even. Um, things like that are great when Neptune is changing direction like that. Again, Neptune stays retrograde for six months. So it's more about that timing when it's turning around that you can put extra attention on the going within the getting honest with yourself about stuff. Um, again, like deeper beliefs. Um, Jupiter and Neptune, we say Neptune's the higher octave of Jupiter. So there's kind of that similar feeling with Jupiter going a direct and Neptune turning around. It's like, hey, you know, goals, dreams, unconditional love. Like, are you living your truth? Like, all of that. And gently, how can I move more toward that um, is kind of the theme of both of those doing that little dance like they are. But if you are a meditator or yoga practitioner or something, it's it's a great, rich time for that sort of stuff. Or again, people that investigate their dreams and stuff. Um, okay, and then the final thing I want to talk to you about is the new moon that we're having in Cancer. So the sun goes into Cancer on the 21st, let's say. The sun and moon, let's see, when is this actually? It's the 24th that the sun and moon, of course, are conjuncting each other, the same as, so sun in Cancer, moon in Cancer. Um, that's what the new moon is. A full moon, by the way, is when the sun is opposite the moon. So that new moon, um, also the planet Mercury, which is your thinking, is also gonna be in Cancer. So we got sun and moon and Mercury. And it's a great, great opportunity because the sun is how you identify with things and the moon is your feelings more on a deep emotional level as opposed to an intellectual-ish level with the sun or a core level, let's say, because Mercury is more the thinking and the intellect. So it's almost like, your, let's even say the sun is the will, your will to do it and um, enthusiasm about that. The moon is being able to have like a deep passion and, and a feeling of it's right. And then Mercury is the thinking, like it all is sort of in alignment. And um, so like your head, your heart, and your gut are all in alignment. Um, when we're having this new moon. And being in Cancer, that can be about your eating, uh, family issues, self-nurturing, self-care, um, making time for uh, family togetherness time or for your own nurturing yourself. It's, you know, I always want to take a day off and go to the beach. I mean, it's sort of a small thing, but to do that and, and see that as a self-care that then brings you more energy to take back into your world, if it's your family or workplace or whatever. Um, you know, the eating habits, because cancer is a lot about food and, and uh, even addictions to food and stuff. You can have aha moments about that, breakthroughs about emotional patterns that the moon represents, subliminal 
mind thought patterns that are created from childhood, issues with the family can have an, oh, aha, um, and I'm going to begin doing this. The new moon is so much about I'm starting to do this. I had that awareness, which is the Mercury there, and then um, I'm going to start a new plan of doing this. I'm going to act on all of that, which the new moon can be that new beginning of how you're doing things. And some people like to do, and of course, because it's June, it's also the summer solstice. So some people like to do a little ritual about that, where it's the longest day of the year and the longest awareness. You know, we can see the day is that kind of bright light of awareness, as opposed to the inner light of awareness, which also is aware when we have the opposite in um, December. But it's the fulfillment of that aha stuff that came about at Christmas time or December and living it like, yes, you know, and um, how am I grateful for all of that and, you know, and still um, kind of taking off from that level of going even higher, you know, because it's that new moon and commitment to yourself and others. Um, and the best way to commit to yourself that brings you to more at service to others and being connected to the others in your life. So that's June and nothing um, too much more I want to get into the rest of June. If you'd like to get a reading with me, it's alunamichaels.com is my website or myself or call or text is 248-583-1663. And I hope you have a great June and I'll see you again in July and bye for now.